Without a vision, the people perish. Welcome to Vision Plus, a program featuring a positive outlook, dealing with everyday situations of marriage, children, and business with challenges and opportunities. Believing Philippians 4.13, you and I can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Teacher, author, speaker, Delighting audiences from New York to Sacramento with a heart and message for the people today. Here's Bonnie Liphart. Hello and welcome. I'm Bonnie Liphart and I'm so delighted that you joined us today. We have with us a guest that perhaps if you know of someone that has ever played a little bit with tarot cards or has uh, children and maybe they have been hiding a little drinking and uh, some other things, a little pot smoking, and you know about it, perhaps you could give them a call and see if they would like to watch this program now or even get the videotape. We hope that'll be possible for you to do that. My co-host is one that was very nicely, wonderfully did the show for me while I was out of state, Deanna Libhart. Deanna, glad that you are here with us today. Nice to be here. Thank you so much. And thank you for helping us during that other time. And our guest is Charlotte Culclasure. Charlotte is a person from Gunnersville and been away in other states for a long time. Welcome, Charlotte. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Now, Charlotte, you are a person that has been through a lot of things, and I've just given them a little bit of inkling of one of the things that you've been experienced, that you've experienced. Tell me a little bit about Charlotte Cochlasier. Oh dear, I don't know where to start. Well, okay, <laughs> you grew, you grew up grew in up Alabama. I grew up in Alabama. Uh, as a matter of fact, I finished school with Arab. And um, I've been living in Greenville, South Carolina for about the last 15 years. I have three children. Um, the oldest is 21, a 17-year-old, and a 16-year-old. Doesn't she look good? Oh, she does. Thank uh -huh. you. <laughs> it's Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and what's this about uh, tarot cards? Tell me of what you've been doing while you were in South Carolina. Uh, how long ago was it when you left? Oh, I left Green. I left Alabama and moved to Greenville about 15 or 16 years ago. Um, I got into tarot cards about two and a half, three years ago, just shortly before I met the Lord. But I feel like there were a lot of things that had led up to this point in my life, and I didn't realize that there was a battle going on. I do now. I understand it now. But at that time, I, didn't know, I did not know what was happening. And uh, there was a time in my life when I was about 16 years old that I felt a call of God one night in church and I did not go to the altar. And at that point, I felt like, I feel like now that God let me go so that I could learn from my own mistakes. And when he did call me this time, I knew who it was and I knew how important it was that I answered his call. When, what did you do in those 20 years? Um, I, I married, I had children. I divorced. I had three marriages that failed. Um, I raised my children as a single parent for about the last 10 years. Um, I developed a severe drinking problem. I um, began to play with some drugs, uh, marijuana and cocaine, because I thought that was the end thing to do. All, everybody that was in dabbled a little in drugs. And I know now that it is not the right thing to do. It's, it's, uh, the devil has a way of deceiving us by painting a very pretty picture on the outside, but inside it will tear you apart. It will destroy your life. What did your children think of about what you were doing? Um, I hid it from them. Uh, 
of course, I, you know, the sight of me did not want my children to know that I smoked marijuana or did I cocaine. So. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but um, they knew, and I, I knew they knew, and, and they didn't like it. They resented it. But about four years ago, I stopped drinking, and I did not know that at that time that... Well, I didn't give God the credit for it, but I know now who the credit belongs to. Um, I managed to stop drinking and started trying to to change my life myself and straighten my own life up. Why did you stop? Pardon me? Why did you stop drinking? I, I was very unhappy, just very, very unhappy. It seemed like, you know, the answers that I was looking for you could not find in a bottle. And um, I began to dabble a little in astrology and the occult. You know, I was looking for answers, for spiritual answers, that I didn't have answers to a lot of questions in my life. And um, I decided to start spending more time with my family and my children. And matter of fact, we got a hobby together. We got into horses and started showing horses, were playing with horses, riding them, just enjoying them. And this was good, it was, but it, it was a substitute for Jesus Christ, and I know that. Um, however, it did serve the purpose of drawing me closer to my family and um, giving me a purpose with them, you know, <clears throat> to look forward to every day. But about four years ago, well, actually about six years ago, I began to have as I got in more into astrology and things, I began to have um, visions of you, things that were going to happen. Go ahead. And, could you see the future? Uh, I mean, could you tell people's future? How did they do that? It's, um, the devil will convince you that you can do anything. And anything that you, you can speak anything into existence. And you can, this is where Satan deceives us. Um, I woke up one morning, well, all right, let's get back to, I, I began to have visions. For instance, one day <clears throat> I had a condominium at a, on a lake resort in Greenville. And my ex-husband lived on the lake too, and he had a house on the lake. And we were good friends, and we were seeing each other again. And my children, I was going over to his house, we were going to plant a garden. My children were still at the condo, and they had wanted to stay there and play with their friends that day. Uh, I left them with the next door neighbor and her children, and they were like 10 and 12 years old at that time. And I went over to to start planting this garden, and all of a sudden I had a vision of my children underwater with bubbles all around them. I could see my daughter, her hair was flowing in the water, and you know, just an eerie feeling came over me. I couldn't shake it. So <clears throat> I, I kind of slept it off, and a few minutes later I had the same vision again, and I could see a boat propeller this time. I could see my child, and I could see my son. and. I, I just, I couldn't shake this feeling of fear that I had, and I just stopped, and I said, I've got to go home and check on the children, something's wrong. I jumped in my car, I drove to the condominium, I didn't find them, I went down to the swimming pool, and the neighbor told me they were down on the boat dock. Oh, I went down to the boat dock, and there were my kids, and I asked them what they'd been doing, and they told me they were playing hide-and-seek under the boats. Well, <laughs> it, needless to say, <laughs> it just scared the daylights out of me. And, you know, I proceeded to explain to them that they couldn't play under the boats, that, you know, it was very dangerous, anything could have happened. But at that point, these visions that I had became more and more frequent. Um, and I began to think that I was psychic. So uh, not too long after that, I woke up one morning and um, a voice just clearly told me to go get a deck of tarot cards. And I don't know why, I'd never thought of them before. But I got in my car, got dressed, got in my car, drove to the mall, and went in straight into a store, and there they were. 
if I had known at the time that they were not from God, I would never have, have taken them because I didn't want to do anything that went against the Word of God. But these were presented to me as uh, the same things that King Solomon got his wisdom from. They were divine and they were holy. And then I could control my own destiny through them. And it's true, you can control your destiny. But God says in his word that we should look to him for our future needs and let him take control of our destiny. And any time that you play with tarot cards of the occult, you are going against the written word of God. Anyway, this I didn't realize that there was a battle going on. I, I went ahead and I got the cards and I took them to the car and I was afraid of them. Just, I, you know, there was something that just spooky about them. But I put them in the back seat and I started once to take them back in and I did and I went ahead and took them home. But I was, I was very leery of them. And um, as a matter of fact, for two or three days, I, w I wouldn't even take them out and, and look at them. I just left them alone. So, um, I guess about two, three days later, I got the book out that came with them, and I began to play with them and ask them questions. And they would answer me very accurately. The cards answered yes. you? Yes. Uh -huh. <clears throat> they answer me very accurately, and they will. Um, you see, Satan does not know God's entire plan for our future. And any time we go to the devil or his ways and ask him, he will plant things in our subconscious minds that we really make happen. This is what people fail to see when they subconsciously, subconsciously make, right. we make the things happen. Right. We make the answers appear the way we want to see them. They are not from God. This is where we control our own lives and our own destiny. But things started to happen at this point, and I, I had a feeling that deep within me that these were wrong, that they were not from God. There was a struggle and a battle going on inside of me. Um, I began to have visions of heaven and hell and a dark side and a light side. I began to, to look at people and one minute I would see the face of Jesus and the next minute I would see the face of Satan. You know, I was under conviction so deeply and I did not know what was going on. I really didn't understand any of it until I was at home one day, I, my son was there with me, but I decided I needed just to relax. I went in and I sat down, ran a tub full of warm water and sat down to take a hot bath. And I heard the voice of God for the first time. And when you hear the voice of God, you know it. I felt a lot like Isaiah did when he said, oh, woe is me, I am a man of unclean lips. I knew that I was not ready to meet God, and he spoke to me as clearly as you and I are speaking to each other. I've heard that. And it scared me, it frightened me. I just, I almost went to pieces, and I began to weep and cry, and I knew, I, I thought I was going to die. I well, told what did he him. say? He called my name. He hmm. just spoke my name. And How did you know it wasn't Satan? It was God instead. Of I was just—it was the sound in his voice. It was the sound. It was there was a power. It was just a. Now I've never really heard anyone say that Satan called them. It was God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was his. He spoke my name, and he said, "He said Charlotte." And when it frightened me so badly, I mean, I immediately knew that I was not ready to meet God the minute I heard him speak. Did you think you, it was time yes. that you were going I to? I thought I was going to die. And I knew I wasn't ready. Oh. And he called my name a second time. And it even frightened me even more. And then he started to calm me down. And I felt 
a warmth. I can't explain it, but I, I literally felt him touching me. I felt a warmth all around me, and I heard him say, calm down, it's okay, it's not your time yet. And I was weeping and crying, and then he said, Charlotte, why do you do the things that you do? Don't you know there's only one thing missing in your life? And when he said that, I spoke his name. I said, Jesus Christ. And at that point, the realization that he did die for me, that he shed his blood for me, became so real and so strong. He, um, at, at that point, he said, there's only one thing I've ever heard you ask for. And he said, that's security for your children. And he said, this is something you've talked about over and over and over again. And he said, what better security than me? And when he said that, I knew that there was no better security, that he was the only answer. And I, I began to, to cry even harder, and I said, it was you all alone. It was you. You were there all alone looking after me. And I didn't even know it. You were the answer the whole time. When I stopped crying and got out of that bathtub and walked out of the bathroom, I, I, I was in a state of shock, I think. I picked up my Bible, and I opened it up, and I looked down. It was in Psalms, and a verse of Scripture jumped out at me. And it's, it's kind of comical because it was so true. But it said, some people put their trust in horses. Some put their trust in chariots, but the name of God will reign forever. And I knew exactly what he meant when he said that, because I had gotten horses to bring my family back together again, to make us closer together and to build our, our, our family unit together. But what I needed was God in our lives to put our family back together and to get my children on the path that they needed to be on and me on the path that I needed to be on. I think maybe that that was a step that, that the Lord might have let you take because I think a, a unit, if the family is together and then you get the Lord, you know, involved in your life, then everyone is going to be doing, it, you know, having him in his life. Right. Whereas if you were just been by yourself and had the Lord and then tried to get your family together, might not have happened. What do you think? What did you do next, Charlotte? Uh, well, it's, it's funny because my daughter, my oldest daughter, realized that I had been playing with the tarot cards. I had told her about it, and she didn't like it. She was upset about it. And then my middle daughter knew that I had them, and she was very upset about it. And Melissa had brought me a book to read called The Beautiful Side of Evil by Joanna Michelson. And when I read the book, it was almost like reading my life story. And Joanna M Michelson is a born-again Christian who's um, dabbled in sort of the same things that I had dabbled in. And in this book, she specifically told anybody who had been dabbling in the occult, you know, that they needed to get rid of the cards, Ouija boards, anything like that. Just burn them, get rid of them. And I didn't realize at that time that, you know, God, this was from Him. He was telling me I had to get rid of them. And uh, when I realized that God, I, had, I told God, I said, you know, I wasn't in church, and I said, you know, you've got to help me find a church that I can go to where I can take my children, where I will feel you, where I will know that it's from you, and, you know, be a part of it. Uh, it's about a week or ten days passed, and there was no church. The forces in my house became very, very, very strong. There was a battle going on. And Satan was not ready to let go of me. How did you know that Satan wasn't ready to let go? I didn't understand it all, but for instance, my ex-husband and I started arguing one morning, and I had noticed that any time there was an argument in the house, that things would happen. I just there was the, the force, the presence in my house was 
just unbelievable. The TV would turn off and on by itself. Um, we were arguing one morning and a light switch, a light a plate on the wall, screwed in like an electrical outlet, literally flew off the wall and bounced against the wall across from me and fell on the floor and broke into a hundred pieces. Uh, I didn't understand all this. I didn't know what was going on. Did you ever have an encounter with Satan himself? Uh, I, after I had called on Jesus Christ, after I spoke his name, he watched over me because if he hadn't, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. I would probably thought I was having a nervous breakdown and completely going off the deep end. But yes, I began to see a black hooded figure that followed me from room to room. He would never meet me head on, but he was always there in the corner of my eye. And it was frightening because it wouldn't go away. I'm frightened just hearing about it. It's very frightening. I think that's The spiritual scary. world is why. very, very real. People do not understand that, but it is very, very real. And every time a person, a child, innocently even, plays with a Ouija board or tarot cards or anything like that, they opened up a channel, they open a door for an evil spirit to enter into this world. They do not understand what they are playing with, and it is very very dangerous. Well, is reading your horoscope? Yes. That, is reading it? That goes against the Word of God. It is in the book of Daniel, and if you'll go to Daniel and read I cannot quote you the actual scripture right now. I should have done my homework a little better before I came here. But in the book of Daniel, God strictly speaks against using the stars to plot your future. I wasn't going to He use says them they are there. Yeah. I was just going to see if they <laughs> Yeah. No, he you know, says that they are there for signs and wonders, but we should look to him for any any needs and and for our future. Yeah, I've only I've read them before, but I just read them if it said I was going to have a good day, fine. If I said it plan, every time you read it, it said it I wasn't. I read somebody else's in your subconscious. Every time you read it, it plants something in your subconscious and your own mind can trick you into making it happen. Oh, good Lord, ma'am. And when, yeah, I don't are, know. do you still have that uh, hooded figure? No. Okay. <laughs> How did you get rid of okay. the hooded figure? Um, God had told me through this book that I needed to burn the tarot cards to get rid of them. When I realized, when I went back and read it again and I realized that I had to, to, to destroy these cards because this was an outward symbol to Satan that I don't want to be a part of his kingdom anymore, that I was going to serve God and that God would be the Lord and Master in my house, that Jesus Christ would rule my house. But I was frightened. I was, Satan still, I know now that you don't have to fear Satan. As long as you are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, you have nothing to fear. That God, our God that we serve is a mighty God and he's more powerful than Satan could ever dream of being. But I didn't know this at that time. But I was afraid to burn the cards. And I remember I called my daughter and I, she was at work and I said, Missy, will you please come home? There's something I want you to help me do. So she jumped in her car and came home, and, and I was literally a, a basket case. I was just, a, I really didn't know if I was having a nervous breakdown at that point. Melissa came home, and uh, I said, Missy, we've got to go burn these tarot cards. And she said, here? And I said, no, we're going to take them to the woods. So we get in the car, I get a five-gallon can of gasoline. Five gallon for a little gasoline. pack. Of She's cars. got the fire department following <laughs> her. So we put them in the car, I get some wood and I get a five gallon can of gasoline in my Bible. And we start driving to the woods to burn these cards. And I was I was scared. i I really was very frightened because I didn't know. So any where better. did you end up burning them? Uh, we're driving down the road and all of a sudden God spoke just as clearly to my heart as he could speak and he said, I will fear no evil. 
for that hard with me. And I slammed down the brakes and Melissa said, what are you doing? I said, I will fear no evil for my God is with me. We're going home. We're going to burn them in the backyard. <laughs> so we turned around and went back to the house and pulled up in the backyard and I got some wood and laid these cards on top of them, poured five gallons worth of gasoline on them and struck a match and burned them to kingdom come. <laughs> Did you pray differently after you uh, burned them? At first, I was, I was praying the whole time. I was praying the whole time because I was, this is how TV deceives and how, us. I was frightened. And after you got that done, how did you find your church? Okay. Um, in the next three minutes. <laughs> uh, we got the cards burned. Melissa went back to work and I walked in the house and I felt so good. I walked in the house and went to the kitchen sink and I was getting something to drink and all of a sudden there was the black hooded figure <laughs> to the corner. And I heard him laughing at me. And he said, you don't think you're going to get rid of me that easily, do you? And I said, yes, I do. I turned around and I walked over to my dining room table. I got the phone book and I knew I needed counseling, Christian counseling at that time. And I opened my book up and it jumped out at me, Christian counseling. Just there so it was. You called I called, the church was called Abundant Life. It was in Berea, in Greenville, South Carolina. I called and the lady that was the secretary there, God bless her. I, I was crying, I was just desperate. And she was so worried about me, and she said, Charlotte, I wanna pray for you right now. And she began to pray for me. She said, I know you're frightened, and I, I can, I'm very concerned about you. She said, if you wanna to come to the church and sit with me until Pastor Bolin gets here, come on. She said, otherwise he'll be here about three o'clock. She said, but I'm gonna pray for you the whole time. I hung that telephone up and I was in despair. I was so frightened. The lamp shade fell off, flipped off the lamp in the living room, which frightened me even more. I was afraid to walk down the hall to my bedroom to get dressed. I was so afraid I was going to meet Satan in the hall. And he, he wouldn't come out and face me. This is, he, is, he is such a coward. He will not come out and face you, but he lurks so on the side. So somehow you got dressed. Jesus. So Jesus on the I, when Pat you... was praying for me, and I could feel her prayers. So I you went to the church? I could feel her prayers. Mm -hmm. And I could feel this burden lifting off of me. I got up, I went back, I got dressed. I was still frightened, but she was praying for me the whole time. I got in my car, I went to the church, and I remember thinking, Lord, if this is not from you, they're going to either lock me away <laughs> or they're going to believe me and they're so, going to listen so to me. You, they, I went in. I met the most wonderful pastor I have ever met in my life. I spent three hours talking to him and found out that I wasn't crazy. And that you that got was delivered real. from I this evil. And you have been glowing <laughs> ever have since. Been glowing ever since. And it's I Charlotte just praise Paul God Frazier. for it. Oh, I want to hear more. And I know our <laughs> audience does. So I thank you so much. You. And Deanna Libhart, our co-host here. And if you want to hear more, you'll just have to get in touch with us here at 4618148. I'm Bonnie Libhart, uh, along with Charlotte and Deanna. And bless your heart for watching. Jesus, 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 Jesus,